This is going to be your weekly soulmate twin flame relationship reading. If it's meant for you, it's meant for you. We're going to take a look at the connection between you and your person. We're going to basically have a conversation between the two of you and see what's going on in the headspace, the heart space, and what we're hoping for in regards to next steps. Now, as I'm filming this, it is Friday morning and interesting energy today. It's a little bit dark a little bit rainy looking the emotions feel like they're going to come out today and not just because of the rain because of what we've been going through in the last little while you know the intensity was so high the emotions running high you know this fear of change and just a lot of things coming at us at one time you know almost feeling bombarded by so many energies now, last week, we did have a full moon in Aries, and that's what I'm referring to, especially, you know, that Aries energy is so strong. It's this, you know, um, well, yeah, intensity, but it's like Aries is the god of war, right? So, so many things happening. Now, we have calmed down a little bit today, like I said, and Venus is in Sagittarius, so that is a positive thing. I believe Venus is in Sagittarius until about November 11th. And so, yeah, it's a very positive thing, you know, it gives us a little bit of a relief. Now, I hadn't even thought about it until this morning, but I mean, we do have a Mercury retrograde coming up um, in a little while. Not yet, but, you know, we're getting there. I don't know how many of you had any glitches. I have found the last few days, so many things have been glitching electronically, like my internet going in and out, power surging in different areas. There was even a power outage um, not far from me, which was really surprising because there was really no connection to any reason. It just kind of happened. And we do know that this has been happening in, you know, different parts of the world. I mean, Cuba was without power. My goodness, I, I hope everybody's okay. It's tough. It's tough being in that kind of energy. So anyways, uh, if you've been feeling like it's Mercury retrograde, but it's not Mercury retrograde, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. So in the comments before I begin, please let me know your zodiac sign and your word of the day or the vibe that you're feeling or what's the vibe in your relationship. You know, I always love to know what's your sign, the sign of your person, what's the vibes. Always like looking at trends, right, in regards to energies and zodiac signs. So let's take some overall themes and messages. Oh, well, it didn't even take long. This card went flying. What is it? Possibilities. Interesting. The possibilities are endless. Free-spirited adventure and risks. Now, I always say, you know, no risk, no reward. And yeah, sometimes we've got to go for it. You know, reminding me of what I just said to you about Aries energy that we were feeling. You know, anybody who's in Aries or has Aries placements know that they're kind of adventurers. You know, they do first think later. I mean, yeah, they're going to think it, think about it a lot afterwards, but in the moment they kind of are carefree. And, you know, even just this Venus and Sagittarius energy too right now, it's almost like a sense of freedom, you know, and I don't see why we can't take a few risks and see where they take us. The possibilities are endless. I would love to just say it's possible in general. It's possible. And with that, we have here victory, hope, love, and art. How beautiful. There is victory, but again, no risk, no reward. You have to go towards that victory in order to see it unfold. Now let's take another love card here. And we have trust. Well, trust the process. It says, guard your heart. Not everyone deserves your trust. Well, here's the thing. That is true. Have boundaries. Absolutely. But you have to trust the process. And I think something I say every single day to people is that patience and trusting the process is not the same as waiting. So don't ever misunderstand me when I say be patient or trust the process. That's not the same thing as waiting because waiting just brings more waiting. I would never recommend that to anybody, but trusting something and letting it unfold, absolutely. Now, guarding your heart doesn't mean you have to have walls. Again, it just means boundaries where you're making steady movement forward in your own personal growth and evolution and making sure that you're not just leaning into everything that comes your way or allowing behaviors that may not suit you, right? So always make sure that you are consciously aware of what trusting the process means versus waiting. Because sometimes we do have to take a risk in love or know that there are possibilities in love. I'm not so big on this guarding your heart to the point where we shut everything down. 
you know, because we see so many people online, you know, and day to day, depending on, on circumstances, say, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm not dating anymore, I don't want this, you know, I, I've heard it all, I feel like. And um, my view on that is we've always got to find a way to put ourselves out there. Some of the best businesses in the world didn't become the best because they gave up. Some of the most successful people in the world didn't become successful by giving up. Why they got successful is because they took risks and they put themselves out there despite the possibility of something may not, uh, that may not work out the way they thought. And that's okay because good luck is bad luck and bad luck is good luck. Sometimes something you think is so great turns out to be something that's not, you know? And the opposite, sometimes you think, uh, oh, this is, this is not what I wanted, but it ends up being the best thing that ever happened to you, you know? And I guess, side note, I know I'm talking a lot here, but I just wanna give you some food for thought about something. And that is oftentimes in these deep soul connections, we find people that mirror us and we think, wow, that's so amazing. They're just like me. This is incredible. This feels like unlike anything I've ever felt before. And I've come to the conclusion that somebody who mirrors us is initially great because it shows us all the things within ourselves that we need to change, right? As in, we need to get better with, we need to grow boundaries, communicate better, you know, make decisions, be more expressive, whatever, whatever you want to want to say about yourself or your person but some of the most successful connections actually come through opposites attracting bringing the best out of someone else and vice versa challenging each other to be better people i noticed that some of the best astrological compatibility comes through saturn and yeah we like to be compatible but when we have these conjunctions oppositions or squares in astrology that can give us a little bit of tension yes i know it's not going to be easy but it gives us a sense of duty to each other to work through those tensions and so it makes me reflect on relationships that i've had in the past you know where when we were so similar was that really a good thing do i really want someone to mirror me you know i don't know if i do i think i'd like somebody who's sort of going to challenge me make me think differently help me do differently and come together for a balance, a compromise, you know? So anyways, just food for thought in that conversation. Pardon me, I digress. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what's going on in your headspace, person's headspace, your heart space, their heart space, overall energy and underlying energy. And of course, feel free to swap sides if it makes more sense, you know? So like I said, we've looked at the overall energy here and um, I'll take some cards at the very end for some underlying energies or last bit of guidance, but we're gonna first look into your headspace. What's going on right now? Now, ultimately, if you would like a more personalized reading, I can do that for you. It is available on my website, but let's see what comes out today. And we have the moon. Funny that I was referring back to that full moon in Aries. I'm kind of wondering how that full moon in Aries went for everybody. Um, but we do have a new moon in Scorpio coming. And that I believe is on November 1st. And the moon is all about emotions. It's intuition. It's also the need to purge and surrender and let go. Letting go of the old so that we can have the new. Remember, your new life is gonna cost you your old life, right? I thought that was, okay, I thought there were two cards there. And we have here uh, the two of swords. Well, it wouldn't be a Kelly Lorraine reading if I didn't say, are you in the old, are you in the new? So there you go. Are you lingering in old energy or are you willing to take a risk and be in new energy? Let's see what's going on in your person's headspace here. And we have the four of pentacles. Okay, so there is a bit of holding back. And I've had a few people ask me actually this past week about the four of pentacles specifically asking, what does that mean? This is a card that's really all or nothing. There's no in between. You know, you like something or you don't. You want something or you don't. It's extremes of giving time, love or money. And sometimes it's holding on to something, you know, that we're afraid to let go of. You know, we clutch onto something so, so tightly. And with that, there is the Knight of Cups. See, you know what it is? It's like, I think there's somebody who wants to give their heart or be more open or be more expressive, but they're afraid to. And, you know, it's tough. Um, for any of you that have ever read 
uh, in more detail about avoidant tendencies. This is what I mean, you know, never take those things personally. Someone who displays avoidant tendencies, you know, grows up with their needs not being met emotionally, you know, or they're neglected in some way. And they're taught, you know, don't cry or I'll give you something to cry about or, you know, don't be weak if you show your emotions, you know, or you're going to be weak if you show your emotions. I do feel like there's somebody here that is holding their emotions back, but that doesn't mean they don't care. Now, I'm not saying you have to allow it or you have to excuse it, um, but essentially, you know, you've got to recognize that someone has to really want to process these traumas, okay? Now, let's take a look at what's going on in your heart space. And there's the Knight of Swords. Okay, so you're wanting to move forward quite swiftly in your heart, probably more quickly than this side here, although I don't wanna make assumptions. Um, the Seven of Wands asks, are you on the offensive or are you on the defensive? You know, this is an energy that says, do you feel like you have your back against the wall? Are you trying to rush something because, you know, maybe you've had past hurts? You know, there's always reasons for such things. Let's take a look at your person's heart space. The Knight of Wands, hot and cold, and this is the difficulty. They can really care and want to give, okay? But at the same time, this is that passion in the pants, and I love it, I know everybody else is too. We all love a good pip, right? But at the same time, it rides in quickly, it leaves just as fast, it's hot and cold, it's mixed signals. We struggle with what do they mean? Do we wait? You know, do we move on? I get those questions all the time. You know, is this going to be it? Is this the one? Are we going to finally be together? And those are such tough questions because it really depends on those traumas, triggers, and hurts. You know, it's never just clear cut. And there's the 10 of wands. See, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally exhausted. Your person this week might be feeling quite tired and worn down. And I know a lot of people felt the same way earlier in the week. You know, Monday in particular, wow, that day was intense. You know, like needed a nap, you know, no capacity. Um, it was a tough vibe processing all those emotions and energies coming at us. Let's take a look at what you would like as the next steps. Mm, eight of swords you're overthinking it you're overthinking the next steps maybe you have a lot on your mind maybe you have a lot of expectations and here is the queen of cups okay queen of cups is an energy of overgiving possibly chasing even you know that's that overgiving overdoing and problem solving if you're finding yourself in that energy please be very careful you might also be having a hard time distinguishing between your anxiety and your intuition and the thing about intuition is that your body's programmed to tell you, right? But your body's also programmed to traumas, triggers, and hurts. So that's why it can be so difficult. But how do you know unless you try? How do you know unless you put yourself out there? And the possibilities are endless. You've got to take a risk sometimes and figure it out as you go. And that's why I always say trusting the process is so key because when you let it unfold, you're going to have a better chance of success in that victory that we were talking about. Okay, let's see what else here. Yeah, the chariot. I think your person does want to move forward, and that is a card of victory. Eight of Wands, manifestation, communication. Can you see the difference? I just want to make a point. It's almost like there's a swapping of energies at the next steps, though like in how you're both processing things. Because here you have this worry, okay, intuition, anxiety, overthinking, okay? And then here you've got, yeah, I wanna move forward and I wanna manifest. I wanna be an energy that manifests something better. But if you were to look at the head and the heart, it's like a swap because you would think that this would be over here and vice versa. And maybe it is for you. Like I said, swap sides if it makes more sense. But here there's this decision point that you're having. You know, again, the moon is also intuition. Are you willing to trust your heart, trust your intuition? You know, or are you so guarded that you're going to hold yourself back? Here, there's that guardedness. Again, are you on the offensive or are you on the defensive? Are you like a wounded animal in the corner that's saying, 
you know, I'm afraid, um, I'm defensive. Uh, I want to move forward. I wanted to move quickly, but I don't know if I want to go through the battle or go through the work. But ultimately, to get to the victory, you've got to go through the work. You've got to push yourself forward. And here you've got somebody holding back, but they want to open their heart. And yes, there's some heat there and maybe some hot and cold, you know, mixed signals. They're tired, but they really do want to move on from that. But in order for someone who could be avoidant, if I don't know why I'm talking about avoidance today, I don't know if this is really coming up for people, but it's just making me think, that's the vibe I'm having here, where if you want an avoidant or somebody who's not emotionally available to move forward, you have to give them space and you've got to allow them to feel at peace. You know, if they come to you and it's like a slap on the, on the hand, you know, for bad behavior or whatever, then it doesn't give them a sense of peace or, or, or safety. Now, again, I'm not excusing bad behavior. If they've ghosted you, if they've, they've hurt you, ultimately that's your job to make boundaries, right? But I would say to some extent, there is a bit of anxious attachment here, you know, maybe of wanting things a little bit quicker. Ultimately, it's going to depend on your story because, you know, if you're knowing each other only a month or two, different story. If you're knowing somebody for one year, two years, three years, and things aren't changing, well, again, completely different story. So let's take a look. Oops, that's, hmm, there's the man card popping over. The whole deck feels like it's, uh, like it wasn't shuffling. And here we go. Let's see. Okay, the falcon. See? Focus. Third eye. Rising above. Like trusting that intuition. Super, super important. Okay. And checkered flag, conclusion, verdict. I think that they want that energy to end of that holding back. I really do. I think my gift that I have is that I can understand why people do what they do even if I don't agree with it. Now, like I said earlier, it doesn't mean I have to accept things into my daily life or allow it, but I can understand it. So it's not me ever excusing bad behavior I think it's just that I can understand where those traumas, those triggers, those hurts come from. And sometimes we don't think objectively, we think subjectively. And this is the thing that people keep telling me is that they take it so personally when somebody can't give or doesn't have the capacity. They think they've done something wrong. But ultimately, it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's that someone has to work through their stuff, you know? They've got to work through those traumas, those triggers, those hurts, that emotional unavailability or that avoidance, if they're aware of it, obviously. Now in your heart space, we have here, yeah, things are fluid. And this is all about emotions. The emotions could be running high. At the same time, um, instead of fighting it, we have to go with the flow, ride the wave, let things unfold whatever way they're gonna unfold and deal with it as it comes. And um, let's see, in your person's heart space, childhood, they want the innocence. They want the lightness of being. This is a this is an energy here at the Ten of Wands that's such a burden. It's so heavy, you know? And then let's take a look at that intuition versus the overthinking or the anxiety here for the next steps. Yeah, Judgment Day. Total transformation, heeding the call, surrender. You know, my advice really on this side here, I know I know easier said than done, but it's to surrender. Let go, let God, let the universe take the wheel. Stop trying to control the outcome which is something we kind of all do or have to learn the lesson of how not to do, you know? And let's see. Yeah, the ballet shoes. Um, you know, your person's trying. They're trying, you know? This is basically a balancing act. So very interesting. Like nine, nine. Nines are like on the brink of major change. You know, 11s are brand new beginnings. Let's put it this way. I think, as I always say, um, you're kind of like 10 steps ahead, but in certain aspects, you've got to learn to really let go. You know, they do too, but it's a, it's kind of a different dynamic. And if you're ever wondering, how do I know this? Um, I have a lot of receipts. I, I, I have been through this myself. I know every aspect of being on dating apps. I mean, it's been seven years for me to achieve what I really want. You know, I've been through the ups, I've been through the downs, and I help people with this every single day. I would never tell you to do something that I wouldn't do or that I don't know personally. And I stay very true to my word on that. 
So let's take um, a couple cards here for each side just to see any last advice or underlying energies. See, I told you, let it go. Two plus four is six, it's balance, you know? And um, on your person side here, a merry motive. Very interesting. You know, when I see this card, I think of like, there's magic sort of like brewing here. <laughs> and look at these stars on this clothesline. You know, stars are all about healing. Now, I know this is gonna sound cheesy because I know not everybody celebrates Christmas and that's not the, that's not the, um, the message, you know, about specifically Christmas. But to me, it's the timing. Holidays, end of the year. I kind of feel like, we have to sort of allow the healing to take place. Now, it's going to sound weird when I say let the let, let the clothes dry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like put the clothes on the line and let them dry. You know, they don't dry instantly. Like you need to just sort of like let it, let it be a bit, you know, just let it develop. There is magic brewing here and you can see it. So I kind of feel like in the next little while, you know, I mean, we're, Still in October, but time is flying. I think till the end of the year, you're gonna see some things brewing. And I want you to be in that merry energy in that joyous energy and just sort of go with the flow and see where it all takes you. I really hope this resonates with you. I send you so much love. As always, I'd appreciate a like, a comment, a subscribe. It really means the world to me, helps people find my videos. Thank you so much. And I wish you an amazing day.